In this video, we're going to continue on with our build of the seven inch freestyle quad using the SAF open source frame. In the previous video, we put together the basic parts of the frame and mounted the motors um, just initially and got that all set up, which we can see right here. It's basically set up and ready to go. What you're going to need today is um, a soldering iron that um, will be suitable for the job. Um, the solder that you're going to be using, flux pen, um, some sort of side nippers or wire cutters like this if you have. What we're going to do first is um, put the last pieces of the frame together that are actually for the stacks and the stack screws so we can get everything that we want to be able to mount in place. Okay. This frame actually comes with its own stack screws and so rather than using the ones that came with the flight controller we'll just simply put those aside and use the ones that are designed particularly for this frame. So I've put these two through and what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a nut on each one. And the reason we do this is to make sure that those stack screws stay locked in place and don't move around and wiggle and so that the flight stack stays very sturdy and stable inside the quad. We need to put the stack screws in now so we have an idea of where the stack is actually going to be sitting inside the frame of the quad so that we can trim the motor wires to the right length when we go to solder them onto the ESC. In order to do that, you need to have the stack in place. Now, don't go too, too crazy tight on these. Um, the nuts are plastic, and so as a result, um, you could strip them up pretty easily. So we now have that in place. And what that lets us do is see now where the ESC will fit, and the ESC is going to fit right here. And just sit, sit like that. First of all, you can see that this ESC has holes in it right there. Um, those holes are meant for the, the legs of the capacitor. And what you need to do before you put anything in is to make sure that you see the side that's marked negative on the capacitor, which has typically got a bar on it like this, marked negative and make sure that you're going to attach it to the negative terminal on the ESC as well. The way I like to do it is I will take the ESC right off here. I'll find the two holes from the bottom and put the legs of the capacitor through. And then I haven't bent anything or anything yet, still all straight. I'm going to come back and put the ESC onto the stack screws where it's supposed to be. And slowly but surely, work its way down. And what you'll find is that you will reach a spot that is just a sweet spot for it to sit and fold and bend into place and just sit like that. And so you can see now that that's actually bent through the holes. It's very sturdy on there. And then the next thing we'll do is actually take the arms and bend them down again. Completely over. Now that that's right in place, I'm just going to lift it out and then just very, very gently pinch those snug, not really tight, just gently like that. So now they're in place. This excess bit here, you just take your side nippers and nip off the excess. Now we will just Mount that right back on there. That capacitor is on. It will have good contact with everything once we put the, e, uh, um, the XT60 on. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of flux and just put some flux on the pads like this. And we're going to attach the capacitor first. Let it start to heat up the pad. It's not a huge soldering iron, so this is going to take a minute. Once it starts to heat up, we're just going to add a bunch of solder on here because it's also going to form the tin for the XD60 when we go to solder that on in just a few minutes here. We'll do the same thing to the negative side. And you don't want to melt this solder with the iron. You want to melt it on the pad, so you have to wait until the pad gets hot. So basically now we have the pads tinned and the capacitor attached. And so all we need to do next is get the XT60 and attach it. Which 
my dog has something to say about that. We've got the XT60 already sent in the in the stack kit, which was great. However, in this case, this is a little bit long, and so I'm going to actually trim it down a little bit to about here. Now, of course, before we can solder those on, we need to tin them, and so we will do that right now. Tinning just means getting a little bit of solder onto the wire before trying to solder it into place. Put a little bit of flux on there. Again, this iron's a bit small for this gauge of wire. So I needed to get my bigger soldering iron out um, with this bigger tip on it. So I've done that and we're just going to finish this off here. Perfect. So that's one. We can do the other. You can see it just flows in once it goes. And that's exactly what you want. So let's bring the quadcopter back in. We are now going to look at soldering the XT60 onto the plugs here. And so again, we need to make sure negative and positive all match up as they should. This is where these nice tweezers come in handy. I'll just be able to grab the wire here, hold it where I need it to be, and not worry about my fingers getting too hot. Heat the pad first a bit and come up top. Now, that's just the initial attachment. We're going to have to add a bit of solder to that. And we will do the negative side here as well. Same fashion. Again, we'll take this, line that up where we want it, hopefully. Yeah, kind of like that. So as an initial setup, that's good, but those are not finished. They need to actually more solder put on top. So I'm going to do that. That's better. This one will need absolutely more solder added to it. There we go. That's much better. But this positive side still needs a bit of help. Getting pretty close. Nope, I don't like that. Oh, there you are. Freaking hot. That's why we need these. Everything looks good. And we can just pop this off. We want to make sure that nothing's bridged underneath, which it hasn't. Just put a drop of solder on the back. And that, not very much on the back, just enough to cover up the lead there a little bit. And there, we now have the XT60 and the capacitor soldered onto the ESC. And so from here, the next step will be to trim the motor wires and solder them all to their appropriate places in here. To do that, we will pre-tin all of the ESC pads and then get the wires ready for them. So just again, take your time with this. It's just a matter of putting a little bit of the flux on there to make the solder flow better, heat up the pad and let the solder flow onto the pad. Just spin that around and do the others. There we are. So those are all now tinned. And so what we need to do next is measure the, the wires out to the right lengths, trim them off, and re-tin them, and then get them ready for the soldering. I'm just going to do one to show you, and then we'll do all the rest off camera just for speed. To make my life easier, I'm just going to zip tie this on here temporarily keep the wires from flip-flopping all over the place when I'm trying to measure. You don't need to worry about which wire it goes where, so I just take them in a straight line, straight to the ESC, one, two, three in a row. Um, give yourself a little bit of flex so you have a little bit of extra wire. You don't want these to be super tight, so I'm going to cut it a little bit above, and that will give me a little bit of flex like this. You don't want to cut them too short. You can always shorten them later. So there's one, two, and three. So now what I've done is just taken these motor wires that were too long, trimmed them up one by one. I'm going to just peel off a tiny piece of the end here, like that, and tin it so that we can then solder it into place. So. I'm going to do that with the rest of the wires here now. Um, I'll get them all ready, cut, tinned, and then we'll look at soldering them on. 
So we've got all of the motor leads, motor wires tinned up. And so now what we need to do is just simply solder them each into their place. Now, as I do this, I'm also going to be using my smoke stopper here. And after each uh, soldering each motor on, I'm going to test it. If you do all 12 motor wires at once, and then when you go to test it at the end, you find there's a short, you won't know which of the 12 wires caused the problem. So by doing each motor at a time, checking to see if there's a problem with it, you'll know it's okay. You move on to the next one, you know it's okay, and so on. It really makes the troubleshooting a lot, lot easier. One of the biggest problems that people will have or mistakes that they will make is they'll have a lead here or the, the tinned part on the wire that's too big for the pad. And so just make sure that the, the tin tip of your wire is sufficiently sized for the pad that you're soldering onto and then do the soldering. If it's a little bit too long, just trim off a little piece. And that's all you need to do. So here we go with this first one. Let the solder flow and do its job. There we go, and one more here. There we go. The first set of wires are now soldered on. And so what I'm going to do is I have my smoke stopper installed or already plugged in and I'm just going to grab a lipo battery and we'll plug it in. And if there are any shorts, this would be beeping right now. Okay. And all we heard was the one ESC um, fire up. That one's good. So we'll just move on to the second motor and we'll just keep going around until all 12 are done. One more check. Now look at that. No smoke, no beeps, no nothing. What we need to do now, we've got everything basically put together in terms of mounting the, the motors, the ESC and the flight controller. If you remember back with the motors, I only put in two motor screws to begin with just to hold the motors in place. And what we need to do now is actually go back add in the other motor screws, take out the ones that we already put in and put them back in again. The reason we need to do that is when we first put them on, we didn't use thread locker. And the reason for that is when you're doing all of the, uh, the soldering and putting it all together, if something had gone wrong or we found out that perhaps one of the motors was faulty from the factory, it just lets us then remove that really easily without having to take out all of the bolts and undo all of the thread locker and all of that. So what we did is we we built it, we made sure that everything is completely functional, and now we'll go back and we'll just permanently secure all of the motors. So I'm just going to put a little dab on a piece of paper here that we can then just dip each bolt into as we need, and then we can just add a little bit more to here as we need it. And that just kind of speeds up the whole process. We'll just start with one motor, go to the next, go to the next, go to the next, and do them all. We'll put in one, and when you, when you put the thread locker on, you just need to put a little drop on the, on the first couple of threads and that is it. Take your time doing it. You don't need to cross thread the bolts into the motors in order to avoid that. When you first put it in, spin it backwards and you'll start to hear tapping as it drops into place properly. There's one. There it is. There it is. That tells you that it's now lined up and you can start to spin it the other way and it will go in and you won't strip the threads. Line it up, put it in and just basically finger tight. Careful Pinky, not too tight. But you don't need to just grind it in there. These are steel screws or bolts and the base of the motor is aluminum and so you can completely strip it out if you're going too hard. I just put these two new ones in with their thread locker in so now I'm going to take out the ones that I initially put in put thread locker on them and just replace them let's put them right back in and again just finger snug so we'll just continue doing this until all of these motors are done we've gone through now and we've made sure that all four motors have all four motor bolts in place with thread locker and that they're cinched down just just firm but not crazy crazy tight so that will take us to the end of this particular uh, part of the video series. In the next part, what we'll be looking at is installing the remainder of the electronics and finishing off the physical build. From then, we'll also move into installing the 
flight software that we're going to be using on here and getting that set up as well. So if you found this series uh, informative and helpful and interesting so far, uh, maybe you'd like to take uh, the time to subscribe and continue watching the rest of the videos that will be coming out shortly. Until then, take care and safe and happy flying wherever you may be.